Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of Freedom Steel. Todd Vandermeid, former NRA contract lobbyist, Illinois gun law guru. Um, wow, what a week. So I just got in from being out at the club and trying to work in the rain and the wind and the cold on a field tile. Um, we've got some issues out there on some drainage. And uh, so I fired up the coffee pot that you guys sent me. I'm drinking my gun barrel coffee, uh, the cold dead hands brew, uh, out of my mug that was supplied by uh, uh, Shauna Johnson, I believe. And uh, the coffee pot, one of you guys sent me. And so, yeah, thank you very much. Good stuff. Um, yeah, I caught a chill out there that I just can't shake. So, it's been an eventful 48 hours. Friday afternoon, the venerable Judge Stephen McGlynn, I think we're going to start calling him St. Stephen, issued an injunction against the Illinois gun ban and magazine ban, and word took off. We've seen four boxes, diner, guns and gadgets, and others sit there and opine about the judge's rule. We're not going to do that. This is an update. So while we were all busy celebrating, and some of you celebrated with me here Friday night in, a lot, in our first live broadcast, uh, the state was busy at work. At 11.45 Friday evening, the state filed their request for a stay of Judge McGlynn's injunction with Judge McGlynn. The stay request goes to him first. So our lawyers have been diligently reviewing this. We are working on this. We will have a rebuttal as to why Judge McGlynn should not issue a stay. At the same time, the state also went out and filed a notice of appeal. They plan on appealing his uh, issuing of an injunction to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. Now, what we are hearing out there is that there are going to be a flurry of motions flying around. We are going to probably see a motion to consolidate the Herrera case, which was struck, which the injunction was not issued by an Obama appointee that is a challenge to the state ban, Cook County and Chicago bans all in one. Not the best piece of litigation in my mind. Uh, Naperville is the front runner in terms of low numbered case when it was filed and in front of the Court of Appeals. And so there is going to be efforts to consolidate Herrera with Naperville. The state is fighting that. The state wants to go up on Naperville on its thin record. They, they want to do that. Uh, they, they like that. You know, remember, in that case, we're, our side is on defense, trying to argue why the judge got it wrong. In our case with uh, Barnett, FFL, et al., then the state's on defense. You also have Veramontes hanging out there. But we are hearing through the grapevine that the state is going to fight any effort to consolidate any of these cases. They want Naperville to go up and be the standalone case, hold all the other cases in abeyance. So that's what we're hearing right now. We will more than likely be filing a motion to have our case uh, consolidated with Naperville. So you have a split decision between the judges there. And we're going to, uh, you know, uh, the record that the state provided, the issues that were debated are much more in depth in the Southern Illinois case. Uh, Law Weapons started out, going to shout out to Robert and Law Weapons and the guys over there. Uh, you know, they started out on the Naperville Ordinance and then their counsel later on threw in the state law once the state law was passed and all that, and they spent more time on the Naperville Ordinance, and that judge got it wrong. 
you know, that's what the state is arguing with McGlynn, that these other two judges got it right, you got it wrong, except that Judge Kendall has been overturned twice before by the Court of Appeals on gun cases, primarily the Izell case, overturned not once, but twice. Ah, this coffee is taking the chill off of things, guys. So that's where we are. Uh, we're going to be working on this diligently and through all this. It's going to take some time. Uh, we'll see how long it it takes to for Judge McGlynn to go through this. And we will do a separate video going through the state's motion for a stay and all the BS they throw up there. It's about 12 pages long. It's not terribly long. Uh, but basically, they just tell the judge, you got it wrong. These other guys got it right. And you should issue a stay. Um, don't know how that's going to fly with the judge uh, because they don't like some of the things he brought up. And Judge McGlynn in 29 pages covered a lot of ground, a whole lot of ground, and, and took on some issues in very headlong ways, in very succinct ways. And the state is trying to reformulate the, the test. They're trying to reformulate how things get looked at. And they're trying to, you know, it's not a historical twin, but it's a ban on something, therefore it counts kind of stuff with the carriage bans and things like that. So um, getting back into the swing of things here, been out at the club all week, moving dirt and getting some stuff cleaned up. Uh, well, just so you know, a week ago we were on vacation. And I don't normally publicize when we go on vacation just because I don't want somebody to get the bright idea that this may be an easy target to hit uh, while we're not here. And so with some of the questions I was fielding from the denial of the other appeals and stuff like that, that uh, on the injunction primarily coming out of law of weapons, I cut a quick video while we were on the cruise ship. Uh, and my, my comment about being safe in an undisclosed location was just a dig at we we're out of the country and it's a playback to the vice president during 9-11. And I got text messages wondering if I was okay. Friends of mine were receiving calls inquiring if I was okay. I even heard that there was a state police uh, investigator that contacted and reached out to somebody to find out if my house had been raided or whatever. No, Todd is fine. I'm back in the confines of my office. We just went through uh, the West Indies on a Royal Caribbean cruise and just got some time away. And uh, yep, I got some sunburnt and life is good. Uh, everything's okay. Just uh, don't worry about it. If we do get pinched or somebody decides that it would be a good idea to come over here and uh, raid this place you'll hear about it in an official context you don't won't have to guess about it but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon so we try to keep these videos under 15 minutes uh, it just seems to be a sweet spot for a lot of th things um, this one's going to be a little short but I just wanted you to know that while we were all celebrating Friday night Several of you were right here with me online, live. The state was busy and diligently working to undo the good work that Judge St. Stephen McGlynn had done. And uh, they're going to be back at it first thing tomorrow morning trying to get the court to undo what they did. And we will keep you up to date on all of that. We will bring you uh, more information as it becomes readily available but uh onward and upwards so we'll have another round of briefs probably at with judge mcglynn my advice you know uh the state makes some interesting points your honor and i think that it would be wise for us to explore all those points have a full briefing schedule and then oral arguments and say about three weeks i think that would just serve the state just fine to make sure that no stone is left unturned for us to explore and investigate all of their claims so you can make a full and informed decision 
when you answer their request for a stay. So with that, guys, uh, donations to Second Amendment Defense and Education Committee links are below, uh, as well as I'll have a link to Judge McGlynn's order, and I will have a link to the state's stay down below. We will cut a separate video on each of those going through them in detail. They may get a little long-winded or whatever, but that is going to be the long and short of things. So, as always, great to be back. It's always good to get some vitamin D therapy out on the ranges at the club. And, as always, frag out.